Hey everyone, welcome to another game development episode where we're recreating the Legend of Zelda in Game Maker. Uh, today's episode, we're going to start to do things a little bit differently. We're going to focus on starting to build out the levels and how to accomplish that through Game Maker. But what I'm changing is instead of the way I used to do the, these episodes where I'd, I'd think through the problem, solve them myself, and then show you guys how to do it in code, I'm actually going to walk you guys through the thought process of why I'm doing things the way I'm doing them. This will give you a better idea of how I'm trying to solve a problem, how we break it down, and then put it into code eventually. And I think that's an important step, and especially as we're getting to this more complex stuff. Jumping straight to the solution, there's a lot of things that go into those decisions, and I think it's really helpful to, to walk you guys along through that. And you guys can and ask questions as we're going through and progressing through this and, and thinking of new ideas, or even better ideas, because the way I'm approaching these is just one way to solve the problem. There are many ways to solve these same problems um, that may be more efficient or more effective or just different ways that you're thinking about it. So anyway, that's what we're going to try to do. So going through this is going to take several episodes probably, and this may be the way I start doing episodes from now on a little bit more organically instead of prescribed step-by-step -step, um, episodes. So the first thing we'll go through is what do I mean by level build out? And there's several elements of this. Um, so what I have here is uh, VG Maps. It's an interactive map for Zelda. I'll put the link in the description below, but we can actually go through here and see a lot of what we need to know about the overworld. So Zelda has overworld caves that you can go into that are one room caves, um, secrets. So let's show secrets. So you can, you can burn bushes or bomb walls and you can then go into the caves. You can see what's inside those caves as well if you click this. So you have that, um, and then you also have actual levels. So if we go up here, here's a, here's level one. I don't think, yeah, it doesn't show you, but anyway, it, this would be level one. And then you're actually going to be in the level one dungeon and there's, there's nine total levels uh, that you could go to. So when I say level, I actually mean all of this stuff. In fact, I'm going to turn the grid on there. Here's two parts. One is you're in this particular room. This is where Link starts, this very bottom uh, grid here. And then there's rooms to the north, uh, east, south sometimes, you know, if if we're in this one, south uh, and west. So, and that's part of level build out is where all can you go? I can zoom out and view the entire map and you can see, hey, this is the entire overworld map. So one way to solve this problem that would be fairly easy is to, to in Game Maker create one room that contains all of this map. So you create this one big map, I think it'd be like 4,000 pixels wide by, I, I can't remember how, how tall. And you basically build all the tiles out, you put all the enemies in here, and then we write code to only show the room that we're in, the, the part of the level that we're in, and have code to disable everything else so that you know you don't have these enemies running around all over the place. So you're just dealing with one view at a time. So that's one way you can do it. And then when you go into a level or a cave, then you switch to that room and switch back. And that's actually what I started doing with the warp tiles that I showed you guys a couple episodes. Uh, very valid way of doing it, but it causes different problems that you have to keep track of. Um, you know, the vast, how big this room is and keeping track of objects and what to disable and enable uh, can become problematic. Also, if you guys have ever played this game before, you're probably familiar with the Lost Woods, which is this. And I'm actually going to, I'll have an overlay of the video you should see right now, is that the same room keeps popping up and up and up unless you take the right path, and then you will end up in another section of the map. If you build the map all in one room, you can't easily tackle that problem. Uh, you can, I mean, there's ways to tackle that problem, but it, it, it's a different problem that you have to solve. Uh, the same thing goes for uh, the Death Mountain. There's this room right here that if you go up or even to the right or even down, you're stuck in this room. And the only way to solve this puzzle, spoiler alert, is if you go up, 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 you keep going up. And I think after the fourth time, uh, you actually end up in this, which is level five. But if you go left here, you actually go to this room. So we have to solve those problems as a part of building out the Legend of Zelda 2 if we want to be true to the nature of this. So 
How does the actual game Legend of Zelda solve this? Well, they actually don't build out the whole entire map. It's actually all templated in some way that only the room that you're in is being built out. And then there's references saying, hey, there's a room over here and this is what this room is. And when you go to it, it'll start building that room out and then render it on the page. If you go north, there's a room up there. If you go left, there's a room up here. And if you see on my screen, I have this RAM watch. So this tool, I, I think you guys have seen me using this. I don't know that I've very much explained it, but FCE UX um, 2.2 is the version I'm working with. You can actually put in cheat codes. Um, that's actually what I have right now to make me invincible as I'm trying to study the map um, without getting worrying about getting hit. Um, you can also do all sorts of cool stuff like watch uh, information about the code that's going on. In this case, I'm using a RAM watch right here that that's watching two variables. It's two memory locations in the game to tell me what's going on. Now, if you watch this as I change rooms, uh, watch this 00EC uh, memory address. It's going to change. And what that's changing to is the room that it, it went into the code and said, hey, what room should I be going to next? So I'm going to go up. You can see it goes to 58. Then it changes the other one. E00EB is the current room I'm in. If I go down, it changes back to 68 and 68. So every direction that I go to, it's actually going and looking up what part of the map should I, I be going to. So this is how they solve the problem of having the lost woods. So what would happen is if you go up, it would say the same room. If you go left, it would say the same room until you solve the puzzle. And there's other logic in there saying, when did you solve the puzzle? Then now here's a new room that you can go to. And I can actually show you this. I can show you how this works. I can actually put a cheat code in. Uh, let me find my window. If I put a cheat code in here on that memory location, I'm going to say 00EC. And I'm going to keep the value 68. So I'm in room 68 right now. If I add this right here, I'm going to keep this value at 68 always. So watch what happens when I now play the game and I go up. I'm in the same room. I can go up and up and up. I can go right and I can go left and it's the same exact room. And this is how Zelda manages that. So we're gonna do something very similar. That means we're gonna have, it's a little bit more complex as far as how we're gonna build this out, but basically we're gonna create data structures that are gonna say, hey, here's, here's a room, here's a room template and the things about that room. Now this creates different problems that we have to solve, but this is, this is a good challenge and it could be some fun coding. It also means that the way we're gonna build this out is you can start to build out your own levels dynamically. You can even randomize levels um, in some way, in clever ways, uh, and randomize the game if you want it to. So it creates some more power, but it's also gonna be a little bit harder to deal with. So there's a lot of things that we have to solve here um, as a part of this. When we're creating a room, there's a lot of information we need to get. We need to find out, okay, what does the room look like? So what are all the tiles that need to be on here? What are objects that we collide with? Um, what music should be playing? So when we're in the overworld, it's gonna be playing the, the normal theme music for the overworld, but when we go into a cave, the music stops. So when we get to certain rooms, we gotta figure out whether or not we need to stop the music or what needs to happen in there or start new music. Like if we go into one of the dungeons, we start to play the dungeon music. When we get back out of the dungeon, we play that music. So. Um, we're going to have to walk our way through all that and we're going to keep information about what rooms are going to be to the right, left, up and down as a part of that as well. What part of the map we're on. So right here, this green dot that's in the upper left hand corner is going to represent uh, where we are in the overworld map. There's something very similar when you're in the dungeon map. So we got to keep all of this information. All right, so I'm trying to think of anything else that we need to start tackling. Um, so spawning enemies. In, uh, if you guys weren't aware, if you've played Legend of Zelda, when you're going around the map, um, and you, if you kill everybody in this, in this room, and you go to the next room, let me actually fix this code so it's no longer stuck on this. So there's no enemies in that room, but enemies start to show up here. And if I kill them, And I go to this room. So no enemies spawn in here. No enemies spawn in here. 
in this room. And this actually happens as we go to the next room. If I were to kill all the enemies in here, or if I killed some of the enemies and left some, it would actually keep track of that. And one thing to note is it actually keeps track of a certain amount of rooms and it actually keeps a stack of rooms, meaning um, it keeps, I think it's the five last rooms that you visited and it keeps all the information about that, what you did in those rooms. So, but after five, if you visit a sixth room, it's, it's no longer going to keep that information. If you were to go back to this room, all the enemies would spawn again. So there's things like that, that we can keep track of as a, as a part of these rooms. Okay. So I think that's it for, for the high level um, that I wanted to introduce you guys to. And I'm gonna try to push, I'm gonna see if I can push these videos out a little bit more frequently. Right now I've got it at once a week. I'm gonna see if I can do at least twice a week, if not more of us progressing through this and walking you guys through how we're going to solve this problem. But today I wanted to introduce the concept of what we're about to do. And in the next episode, we're gonna to start to build out some of those data structures and starting to get some of those pieces and parts built out. Um, and we're going to kind of do this more interactively than just a prescribed way of solving the problem. So hopefully you guys understand this. Uh, please ask questions in the comments below if you're confused about this. And uh, I want to try to address these as, as quickly as I can to make sure that I'm addressing them in, in the videos for you guys to fully understand what's going on. Uh, I, I I'll leave it at that. Uh, thanks for all of your support and I appreciate everything you guys are doing. Um, next month, you guys are gonna see something. I'm gonna have start to have end credits. I have a, a Patreon page and there's folks that have donated at the uh, $5 level and I'm going to start actually displaying rolling credits of everybody that's donated at the $5 level at the end of these videos. Uh, not just the Zelda videos, but all my videos for that month. So I, I appreciate everybody's support. You guys have been fantastic for this um, and really encourage me to continue on with this series as well as the Game Maker 2 series. So uh, thanks for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.